So I'm reading Paul Sperry's new book, Great American Bank Robbery, and uh, it talks about this big report from the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, which accused major banks of uh, denying black loan applicants far more than white loan applicants. Now this study, however, did not take into account host of relevant data factoring into the denial, such as applicants' net worth, debt burden, employment records or credit histories, other variables such as the size of down payments, the amount of the loan sought, the value of the property being bought, also were left out of the analysis. So this was radical activists uh, trumping up uh, discrimination cases that, that weren't there. So the national media hailed the Boston Fed study as landmark and groundbreaking, but took private analysts as well as at least one FDIC economist little time to determine the study was terminally flawed. They concluded that more relevant measures of the borrower's credit history, such as past delinquencies and whether the borrower met lender's credit standards, explained the gap in lending between whites and blacks, who on average had poorer credit and higher rates of loan defaults. So it's basically phantom racism that this report showed. So April 1993, six months after the release of the report from the Boston Fed, the Federal Reserve issued new underwriting guidelines for bankers to combat possible discrimination in lending. 27-page booklet was called Closing the Gap, a Guide to Equal Opportunity Lending. Gave 10 strategies for banks to improve minority lending, including adopting flexibility in applying underwriting standards. In evaluating such customers, it strongly recommended mortgage industry stretch, even junk, time-tested qualifying rules by giving special consideration to minorities with high household debt, accepting gifts in lieu of down payments from nonprofit organizations such as ACORN, considering extenuating circumstances such as unforeseen expenses in bad credit cases, and accepting temporary welfare payment and unemployment benefits as valid income sources noting that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac had agreed to accept them as well. Widely distributed federal manual also advised lenders that job turnover should not be a focus of concern and lack of credit history should not be seen as a negative factor. So this is the very definition of the high-risk ninja loans, no income, no job, no assets, very loans that federal officials, officials now blame lenders for carrying on their books. So the government was encouraging lenders to rubber stamp applicants with a history of failing to hold a steady job and to pay their bills on time.